Welcome back to another video. Uh, Mufaro here. And, and Joe. Joyce. So in today's video, we're going to talk about how to start a home care business while you're still currently employed. Now, this is a very, very difficult uh, thing to do. Yes, or a uh, decision to make. A very difficult decision to make because a lot of people that are looking to get into the home care business are people that are already passionate about working with patients and whatnot. So nine times out of 10, these folks are gonna be working for nursing home, home care agency. Assistant living. Facility, yes. And they just wanna go out on their own. But that becomes very difficult, right? You have your nine to five business, yes. but also you're trying to launch your own home care business on the side. Mm -hmm. So the major conflict there is gonna be time. And not only time, but there's a conflict between your employer and your new business because you cannot reveal to your existing employer that you're starting a competitive business in the no, same time. you can't town. do that. So you can't do that. So it becomes a problem. I think it's very important for people to really assess what they really want to do because a lot of people would say, yeah, I really want to start my own business, but they stick for that nursing home they've been working for for, for the years. last 10 years. Yes. But you can't do that. You have to quit that job, go look for another form of income that is not in conflict with the business that you're trying to get into. That's right. Because what will happen is this friction will continue. Yes, we understand that you want to work with patients, but if you really, really want to start your own business, so you quit that day job and go drive Uber, deliver food, food. for Uber Eats or Grubhub, but how much can you make with that, though? There are people that make a decent living doing Like that. how much is that? Well, what is the equivalent of what they're making as a home health aide? You can make the same or more delivering food, driving for Uber, than home health care jobs. So if you really want to start your own business, that's the route that I encourage. You know, there are people, of course, who drive, but they may not be interested doing that kind of job. Yes, so they, they need to stick to the employer. It means that those people are not enterprising enough to be able to, to navigate uh, working for themselves. Because really when you're driving Uber, when you're delivering food using these apps, it's as if you're actually self-employed. You have to be self-disciplined. There is also that segment of the population that doesn't have a driver's license, that cannot drive. Yes. I understand that, but that's the minority, you see. Yes. But the majority are able to drive, especially if you live in a state like, like, like Georgia, Georgia, Pennsylvania. Most states, unlike New York. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Most states you can actually drive. So if you can't drive, why not deliver food, make an income that way? Yeah, but my point is that, yes, there could be people who drive, but what if they are not interested in doing that? Good point. Now, that means that they're not flexible enough to start their own business. With people like those, I would encourage them to stay put at their day job okay. because those are the people that are not comfortable getting out of their comfort zone comfort zone do you get what i'm saying yes. they're not daring enough to get out of their comfort zone what you're saying is that they're not comfortable you see comfort is the key <laughs> word <laughs> that's true right yes G doing something you don't want to do like driving for uber delivering food you don't want to do that you so you're not doing this forever though. that's what i'm saying good point just know that you're not going to be doing this forever. It's just a temporary situation. Exactly. These contract jobs with Uber and whatever, yes. what they'll do is they're going to give you more time, meaning they're going to free you from working during the day. And that way you can dedicate your business during the day, during nine the to five day. hours. Yes. And then maybe after five, you're driving Uber, you're delivering food. Because that's more flexible it's than more your employer. It's more flexible, that's true. But your employer wants you to come in 6 in the morning uh, until like, let's say, 6 p.m. And then it depends. There are some shifts. For example, if you're a nursing assistant or nurse, nurse aide or home health aide, you have to do a shift for like 12 hours. Yeah. But it's like a living. You have to stay with the patient. So what time are you going to have? You won't have time. To do your own personal business. You won't have time. Yes. And similarly, even with the nurses that are well paid, yes. if you're making over $100,000 or six figures as a nurse, it's going to be very difficult. Yeah, because you know, most of them have like longer shifts, 12-hour shifts. Yeah. So you, you're trapped, basically. 
like I'm sorry to say this, but if you're a nurse, if you're not willing to downgrade your income, it's not easy. In order for you to <laughs> s sacrifice that income, it's, it's not, I'm not saying it's easy. You see, it's a very uncomfortable. It is, and a lot of people don't want right? to do that. You it know? means that you have to give up that lease of the car, the Benz that you're driving. Yeah, because you know these. <laughs> they fly, you know what I'm saying? Uh, yeah, they have to reward themselves for their hard work, Especially you know? Especially nurses down here in Atlanta, they drive Europeans. I love that, you know? Yes. I love that for them, you know? Good yes. for them. Yeah. Because they're working hard. They're working but hard. what they don't understand, it's a trap. <laughs> right? I don't think they even look at it that no, way. No, they don't see it that way. If you're a businessman, if you're a business mindset, businesswoman, you see that as a trap. Because most business people are willing to take a risk take that risk the risk is let me quit this hundred thousand dollars <laughs> a year nursing job to go drive for uber mm. while i'm building my home care agency on the side and meanwhile they probably saved maybe fifty thousand dollars over the last five years and maybe they saved some money i think that's the best route in my opinion you have to go look for something else that is going to free up your time Yes, it's all about yeah business. having the time to to juggle with both you know jobs. Exactly, yes. but it also it becomes very difficult as well, because mentally we're conditioned to believe that in order for you to earn money, you have to sacrifice your time. That's the only way that they understand how to make money. How to make money? You know, because they've been told, go to a job, go you know work for these people between these hours. And then you get paid this amount of money at the end of your shift or at the end of the month. That's all they know. No. If that's the only way you've known how to make money your whole adult life, it's going to be very difficult for you to switch to the other side where you might not make money for six months. Yes, a lot of people can't. Uh, again, it goes back to patience. If they are used to... Getting that check every two weeks? Every two weeks, and who knows, maybe they are used to a certain lifestyle. It becomes really hard that thinking six months, I'm not going to make anything. Yeah. Let's say you're not making money from six months to nine months, right? Let's just say that. And it happens that And way. it happens. Yeah. Let's say you're not making money six months to nine months, right? Let's say nine months max. Right, you're not making money. I'm telling you, the breaking point is probably going <laughs> to be three months. <laughs> I mean, it's not funny, but... Yeah, most people's <laughs> breaking point is by the third month, if they haven't made a single penny life to, this whole thing doesn't work. But what they don't know is that if you keep applying pressure every single day for those nine months, those results are going to show up by the ninth month. Maybe by the ninth month, you're making more money than you've been making at your day job. It's very unfortunate. A lot of people don't <coughs> see it the way you're explaining it. They, they don't, don't see it. Yeah, you Because right. again, it goes back to lack of patience, lack uh, of self-discipline. Self-discipline. It's a whole combination of things, yeah. you know? And, and also, this is why I said that. It's not in your best interest to quit a job and go full-time on this and not have anything come in. It. You still need to have yeah, some, you need some, some money, money coming, coming in. in. Something. So that you don't start making desperate Decision. Decision. You don't want to do that. <laughs> you get very frustrated and everything is going to fail. <laughs> right? Yeah. Uh, how many times have we uh, been on the call, Joyce? So many times. Yeah. And then somebody's telling us, yeah, I'm looking to quit my job next month so I can go all in on this. No, that's not a good oh. decision. No. You have to be like, talk them off the edge. Just in life in general, you always have to have plan B. You can't just stick to one plan. Yeah. You know? And it's important to have like that stream of income that's sustaining you, just helping you get by. That's right. right? And, and maybe, listen, maybe you might have to downgrade from that mansion that you... <laughs> like I said, it's not easy, but... It's yeah. not easy. Those are the sacrifices that a lot yeah. of people are not willing, yeah. you know, to... Maybe you have a mortgage that you could barely afford. Yeah. You know, you're barely affording a mortgage. Maybe you might have to give up that house, sell that house, Move into a two bedroom, three bedroom apartment. It's very <laughs> hard. It's very, very hard. A lot of people can make those sacrifices, unfortunately, yeah. but that's what you have to do have because, to do in it. order for you to win, you have to sacrifice something. Yeah. And uh, I have to say this most men are able to do it. Yes, it's mostly most like a guy it. thing. Yeah. Yes. You're right if, about if that. If I had to stop again from scratch, I have no problem. Because you know what it is? Mm. Mm. Go ahead. It's simple. 
men use logic and women we use emotions. Uh, it's simple facts. as that. Hundred percent facts. And, and again, there's nothing wrong with that. There's also a saying that says, "Luxuries once tasted become a necessity." And that's so true. Yes, and also it's usually women's nature to keep it safe. I'm the same way too. Sometimes I, I just like to be on the safe side. Risk averse. Yeah. Exactly. Nothing wrong with that. And I think that's why, like, sometimes when you find couples that get into business together, they tend to work. For the most part, not all the time, you know, for the most part, if your personalities are in tune, if your values are in, in the same place, you're able to run a more successful business than if you're solo. That's because right. there's some ideas that I can come up with that are absolutely crazy. But you will remind me that, yo, I think this is crazy. <laughs> right or wrong? Yes. Because I've got no problem taking that crazy risk. Yes. But you will talk me off the edge, but like, maybe you might want to rethink this. <laughs> rethink about then I can it. rethink it, but like, yeah, you're right, that was a crazy idea, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yes. Again, you could come up with an idea, but you're not ready to take that risk. I'm like, oh, that's a great idea, let's take that risk. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Same yes. words, but we need each other. We need each other. Men and women, we need each other. It doesn't matter like what society is telling us that you know, I can be strong and independent, do this on my own. We can't do it on our own. We need women. Women need men. Yes. We need each other, right? Yeah, especially in certain things, we do need each other a lot. Uh, and uh, this is why there's that saying that says two, two heads are better than one. Yeah. It's for a reason. Very true. And I think also the advice that I would give anybody, right, that is in a job right now, right, Let's say you're a nurse. Let's start with a nurse that's making a lot of money and that wants to start their own business. My question to you is, do you have a, a support system? Maybe you have a husband or a partner that's supportive that will allow for you to quit your job and pursue this dream. If you have that, you're extremely lucky. Blessed. Say, yeah, you're very blessed. I say go for it, quit your job, but make sure you tell your partner or your husband, involve them on your decision and tell them that, listen, I need a year, you know, to do this dream, to chase this dream of mine. Can you help me with this dream? Can you support me? Most men are willing to do that. And most women are willing to do that, you know, for the fellas. But not so much for the fellas. Let's be honest. Like, <laughs> a woman is not going to allow his, her man to quit his job uh, and true. pursue a dream <laughs> for the most part. No way. Yeah. But at least for the women, most men are willing to put up with that. So if you have that support system, you're blessed. Go for it quit that job. Now if you don't have that support system, do not quit your job. No. Don't do it. Instead what I advise you to do is uh, go find something else. That means if you're in that position, you're going to have to take even more risk than that person that has a support system. What is the risk that we just talked about? Which is Maybe you might have to give out that house, the, the fancy house. house. Yes. You might oh, have to maybe the car. You might have to give out that luxury car. Oh, your kids go to private school. Maybe your kids might have to go to public school. You a know? good public school. A good public school. There are good public schools out there. Maybe you might have to move into a two-bedroom apartment in a nice part of the city so that your kid can go to a decent public school. You know, stuff like that. So, yeah, I mean, that's the best advice that I can give anybody that's struggling with that. Never ever quit your job. It's, it's a disaster. Don't. Especially if you got kids. Yes, it's not easy. Yeah, no way. Yeah, it's a very bad decision to make. I agree. So anyway, uh, if you're interested in starting a home care business, if you still have more questions, schedule a time. Links below this video. Book some time to ask us any questions you might have about how to get started, what you need. Uh, from start to finish, how to market, contact us and uh, ask us all kinds of questions you might have. And uh, look forward to talking to you and we'll see you in the next video. See ya. Peace, friends.